Doe het zelf. Ik ga een Welcome to another episode of Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. Hey, we back, y'all. Okay. <laughs> it's been a minute, but what y'all been up to? Making drinks, mixing and shaking, you know. Hey, I like that. You know me all over the world, trying to do stuff in medicine, but most importantly, making some dessert. I know that's right. You know I've been catering most definitely. I've been traveling around to different restaurants in Houston, Miami, Orlando, all kinds of different places, San Antonio, Texas. So we're excited to show y'all exactly what we're going to do. And we're doing our special Handle Your Business episode today. Now, this is what our show is all about. Definitely about food, definitely about these pretty and beautiful and <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. We have a few guests. Who are they? Yeah, so we got Mike from Deck Leadership coming in. He's one of the head uh, pit crews in NASCAR. Okay. Uh, we actually got uh, John Randall, who's a best-selling author. And then we have the CEO of Compare Foods coming as well. So this is going to be in a very amazing episode. Well, bienvenidos. Welcome. And I can't believe this is happening because this is another episode of what? Eat, Eat drink, drink, and, and handle, handle your, your business. business. <laughs> So I am making a braided croissant strawberry filled dessert. And of course, my episodes are all about making it easy. You always have that kid that walks in, I need a dessert for tomorrow, mom. Something super simple. So you're just gonna get your croissant dough straight out of the frozen food section. You need strawberries, you can cut them up, super easy. And then you need some cream cheese icing. And you can put a little bit of powdered sugar in that. So how you make that is I'm gonna make a square in my pan. You can put parchment paper, but you absolutely don't have to, as John let me know earlier. You don't have to have it. You don't have to have it. Um, <laughs> so all you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that it is a rectangle. You wanna cut your edges at least one inch apart. As you can see, I'm doing this with a regular, it has to be a pretty sharp knife. And I'm gonna come around to my side and kind of go through. You don't want to try to pull it through because you'll make your dough really, really long. And you also want to make sure it's not set out for too long. So I kind of stop it. So here. It's like them things you take off the, uh, you take off the wall and <laughs> people cut their little number in there. Yeah. <laughs> Rent a room for me and college. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Ty, you was probably an RA, wasn't you? Shut up. <laughs> Rules must be followed, you guys. Oh, Lord, okay. No, Don't bring boys in your room and make sure that you study on time. The library closes at 11. You'll need to be outside. Yeah, I didn't have nobody in my room. All right. Now that you have cut at least one inch strips of your croissant dough, you can go down the middle and this is your cream cheese filling and you put a little bit of powdered sugar and just go down the middle, right down the center. And the reason that you're putting this right down the center is because you don't want it to go towards those strips because then it'll spill out. So go right here to make sure that it's even. Just kind of make your lines. And right after this, you're gonna put your strawberry mixture right on top of it and then drizzle it with some almonds. You also wanna leave a little bit of space at the top so that it doesn't spill out into your pan because it will burn and it will smell like smoke. Now I'm gonna dazzle with some strawberries. Kinda of want them to be even because remember when you're cutting or biting into anything, you don't want them to just have one big chunk. So try to make them as easy, as even as possible. All right, I save my big chunks for the middle. And some people like to just throw them on top of there. I don't do that because I drop everything. So it would probably roll off the table. And then I got my almonds. Perfect. All right, now here comes the fun part. This is where you're actually going to take and make your braid. All right, as you can see, I just pull from the top 
and pull across diagonally. That's what's gonna give you that really good shape. And the reason you wanna make them one inch is because if they're too thin, it'll just be crispy and your stuff will just come out across the top. So some of these are just a little bit too thin, but that's okay. I did put a little bit of flour on the ends and that's just so that it didn't stick if it got a little bit um, too warm. Now for this one, instead of going the other way, I'm gonna come back across and finish it. So that way it's closed. All right, now just to make sure it's all even, I'm gonna pat it down. It should be at least three and a half inches wide. You don't wanna use granulated sugar, you wanna use a thing called terpenado sugar. And it's pure cane sugar and you can see how big they are. You're gonna actually just put these right over top of it. And also a note for my strawberries, I put a little bit of granulated sugar over top of it and I used organic honey. So you're gonna bake this for 375, um, 375 degrees for 15 to 17 minutes. We'll be back and show you the finished look. All right, so I'm gonna tell you how we made our salmon and red snapper. So what we did was we took it and we basically made a sh kind of a brine and you know, sometimes salmon has that white little stuff when you bake it in the oven. In order to try to eliminate that or reduce that, we put it in a little brine with water, salt, and vinegar, and we let it sit and it soak up all that flavor. Then we took it out of the water, patted it dry, and we seasoned it with my holy five, salt, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. All right, and we just place that over the fish, and then we go ahead and season it with a cream, lemon, butter, garlic vinaigrette, with a little bit of uh, olive oil, and we just drizzled that on top of the salmon and the red snapper, and we stuck it in the oven at 425 for about 12 to 15 minutes or so, and you'll see what it looks like in a second. All right, welcome back. Okay, I see in this pan, he didn't found my china, y'all. Where you get that from, John? Where you go, what cabinet? What did you get that from? Uh, there are so many other things he could have used. Yeah, he found my decorative. I like stuff to be pretty. We're doing jerk chicken wings, okay? Mm. Uh, we got an email from Mike talking about what he liked as far as food is concerned. Okay. And he said that he liked anything that was like Caribbean and things like Ooh. that. So we're gonna do some jerk chicken. If you do jerk chicken, you gotta do the yellow rice and peas. Of course. You gotta do the cabbage. Of course. So we got some cabbage that we've already cooked has baby carrots in it. Mm. And I made it kind of like a little Asian swag because a lot of people don't know that the jerk chicken, mm -hmm. it has like soy sauce, like in our mixture here that we blend it up. Okay. So it has a little bit of Asian in, in inspiration mm -hmm. influence. See, she had to correct me because my, my verbiage sometimes is not the best, you know? <laughs> okay, so what, what, what are we doing right now? Okay, so anyway, make a long story short, we blended all of these things up. We got clothes allspice, honey, soy sauce, uh, thyme, Italian seasoning. It smells so good. It really smells good. It really hits your good. nose. And you gotta have the scotch bonnets. We got some red Fresnos. Ooh. So it's, it's just so much ingredients in here. We're just gonna pour this over the top. So we just pour this over the top. And we just mix this all in. All right, so once you rub this all in and it's all massaged in real good, I just take it, put it on a sheet pan and season it with my Holy Five and we stick it in the oven. All right, it's all done you guys. You see just a little bit of, this is what I was talking about with the cream cheese. It's all done. And you can take it out a little bit before so it's not as dark. I just love that this turbinado sugar right has crystalled right over top of it. All right, stay tuned for more. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. Okay, what is what? So this is the red snapper, right? Okay. You know what I'm saying? You can see the garlic and all the butter and everything mm -hmm. has caramelized on the, on the fish. And this is the salmon. So taste it and let it know if it's good enough for our guests. Ooh, okay, they might not get none. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, it looks good. It's Look flaky, it's juicy. Oh my goodness. Look at this. 
Should have drizzled a little lemon juice on top of that. Oh, oh wow, okay. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> what does John say? Talk to me. <laughs> Baby, let me be. <laughs> you now, can't <laughs> now I'm going to make the Caribbean Kiwi mocktail. So what you want to do first is add ice to your glass to keep your glass cold. Okay. Then we're going to cut our kiwi. So you can maybe cut about two wheels of kiwi, two kiwi wheels I like to call it. And just take, put the kiwi wheels in your shaker and you're going to muddle. muddle. Muddle the kiwi in your shaker. I'm gonna add about two ounces of this lemonade and then two ounces of your limeade. Mm -hmm. And now we're ready to shake it up. We're gonna pour it, sort of um, strain it right over top of your glass with your ice in it. Then we will cut another kiwi wheel and use that as your garnish. And now it's ready to drink. Now you can turn this into a cocktail by adding two ounces of bourbon or rum or whatever liquor you like. Just add about two or three ounces. What liquor would you suggest? I would suggest rum since it's a Caribbean drink and okay. rum is very smooth. It goes really well with lemonade. So rum go good with kiwi? Kiwi. Oh, and kiwi. Oh. Yes. If oh, you we... are fruit, you are kiwi. What he said. <laughs> Of course, I'm from the South, so I'm going to make a little bit of a mixture of cultures and combine the worlds. I'm going to make apple pie churros. Really simple. All you need is one cup of water. You're going to put that into a large saucepan. I know this one's a small. And then you're going to use a quarter cup of butter. You need to cut those into small squares. And then you also need about one teaspoon, excuse me, one tablespoon of sugar. You're going to put them all in the pan and you're going to bring that to a boil. Next, you have one cup of flour, just regular flour. And then you're going to have a couple drops of pure vanilla extract. Once you're going to start your bowl, you're going to mix in your flour. You're going to make sure you do that really well. Reduce the heat on that temperature, okay? Bring that down and start to mix it. Later, you're going to add a little bit of your egg, separate it, and let that cool into your dough mixture. After that, put it in a little pie pad here. Make sure you use the one that has one, two, three, four, five prongs because that's the traditional look of it. Put it in there, make sure you do it nicely about six inches onto parchment paper or to paper towels, let it cool and then fry it up. And then I'll teach you just a little bit later how to roll it in some regular cinnamon and sugar and then put that apple pie filling right in the middle. back to another episode of Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. You know who I am. I'm your co-host, Ty Young, also Ty and Carolina, and I'm here with... Mike Metcalf. Hey, I so I hear that you're in NASCAR, your leader and team yeah. of a pit crew. Explain that. Uh, speed is the new currency of business, okay. right? Um, wrote a book about it, 12 Second Culture. We are tasked with five people that have to change four tires and put 18 gallons of gas in a car in 12 seconds, mm -hmm. right? Cool. So we say all the time, it's not big beating small, it's fast beating slow. And so I'm here, my world is all about speed. We got some food, hopefully we can get it quickly because yes. I'm hungry. <laughs> we absolutely will. And it's all about good food because it's about the fast life. Yeah. So what's something that you could definitely kind of run parallel with life and NASCAR? Things are fast, but you know, in that, in that time, things have to be right. What's something in your life that had to be absolutely right? Yeah, so you know, um, it, it's, we want, quality, you know, but we yeah. have to have it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if we're two tenths of a second off, that can be the difference of a million dollars. Wow. I mean, you blink, wow. your, blink your eyes as fast as you can once, that's two tenths of a second. Goodness. And that, <laughs> like, that can be the difference between success and failure. And so um, we always talk about like failing quickly, like you're going to mm -hmm. make mistakes in life. Things yeah. aren't going to go right. And yeah. so, but if you don't carry it from pit stop to pit stop or race to race, you still have a chance to be successful. And so um, a lot of what we do is just about overcoming failure, um, not being, you know, not being burdened down by fear. Like we all have these limiting beliefs yeah. that make us believe that, you know, maybe we're not good enough or we can't compete or we can't do this. And we try to blow that up with everything we do. That is so good. Oh, it's nice to hear somebody that you're, you can tell that you're passionate about this. Oh, I absolutely okay. love that. So. <laughs> How did you get into NASCAR? Like, yep. I uh, so I played football in college. Mm -hmm. um, tore my ACL twice. Obviously, I wanted to play professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, 
doesn't happen when you're injury prone. Okay. So um, I kept training though, I didn't give up. I was like, I'm, I didn't get the use out of my body that I wanted. I was like, I gotta keep doing, keep working, keep grinding. So I uh, ended up getting this uh, personal trainer who mm -hmm. had like Steve Smith and Julius Peppers at the time. Oh, so goodness. I was like training oh. with these big people, right? Yeah, if you're oh, yeah. from around this area, those, those are like the two guys. 1995, you, yes. okay, you yeah, guys, yeah, I was there yeah, when they built it. Yes. 96, so um, so he, this guy ended up getting hired by a race team to take over their pit crew mm -hmm. program. And he just kind of brought me with them. Right place, right time. I didn't know anything about racing. I had never been to one. Oh, wow. People were saying like, you know, you know that black people don't do stuff like that you know <laughs> I can, and right, i go to all of the races you know, i was just there two weeks ago <laughs> see yeah and it's, it's it's cool right it's oh, changing yeah. you know I it's changing it. at the time though in 06 it was you know not very oh, colorful yeah. Yeah. not very colorful but mm -hmm. um fortune favors the brave right so mm -hmm. you had to you got to take shots in life and i don't know i just decided to go for it they gave me a shot and uh that was 16 years ago Wow, so fortune, what is that slogan again? Fortune favors the brave. Fortune favors the brave, and you have to train the mind and fuel the body. That's right. So with that, we have some really good food, okay? Okay, yeah. And I heard you like anything Caribbean. I also heard you like some bourbon. I do like a little bourbon. Yeah, like so we're bourbon. definitely going to segue into the food portion of this. Let's I do, do a lot of the desserts, but Chef J Milk always throws down in the kitchen, and you guys, I don't even eat meat, and today I was like, chicken? Is that chicken? So <laughs> I cannot wait. Chef J Mill and our beautiful model, Janae. I'm oh. trying to let you talk about your dessert because uh, you, yeah. you made this. You made the pretty Indian girl braid. Okay. Oh you, you remember the girl in school yeah, yeah, with the long hair that had that Indian braid to go in the back? See, you know exactly what I, I was talking know, about. Yeah. <laughs> do, you not, do you not know what he's I talking know about? Exactly. Okay. It's called a fish tail braid. Okay. For sure. Okay. And Mike. Yes. You gotta try a little bit of this. Oh, yeah, barbecue absolutely. jerk chicken. See, that's, we got jerk chicken. Yeah. We got yellow rice and peas. Okay. Pigeon peas. Pigeon oh. peas. We got roasted broccoli with garlic. Yeah. Okay. We got some salmon over grits, some mm. red snapper over grits. Okay. And some cabbage and uh, carrots. Cabbage and carrots. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> My lucky day. I can't wait to eat. I am so excited. Thank you so much. You guys, I got to Hawaii next month. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. My weight goals, that is. Oh. <laughs> right? I don't know if it's, am I just hungry or is it just that good? It's I just, mean, I'm not humble when it comes to my food, okay? You know, I'm humble in <laughs> everything else, but when it comes to food, no, I'm not humble. So you're not just that hungry. Right. <laughs> and this is Janae. She is a model. Say what's up, Janae. Hey, Janae, what's your Instagram? Definitely follow me on Instagram at underscore jbaby. That's underscore J A E. B-A-B-I-I-E-E. Okay. Ooh. Right. Well, nice to have you. First time, have you. First time on Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. You said one of your homies was Lululemon and the Bible. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to pray? Uh, God knows our hearts. He does. <laughs> so what do we say? Amen? Amen. 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 Well, we're going to leave y'all alone yeah. finish up y'all interview. All right. All right. Hope y'all and guys are enjoying. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Lululemon. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm judging, hardcore. And it's a great, great brand and product. Yeah. I just... Maybe not expecting that? No, or, no, I had not expected that at all. The guy that I, I knew for a while ended up being a manager at one of the stores. Mm -hmm. They, you know how brand ambassadors work. They're always yeah. looking to kind of break into different, you know, communities, things like that. <clears throat> and he noticed that we all wear black pants. Yeah. And at the time they were bragging about they had the best, lightest, most durable black pants out in the game. Oh wow! You know, game changer black pants. Okay. It's like the uniform. You have to wear black pants at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. And there's 500 people. So he's like, man, well, if I can get a couple people to get on this, maybe everybody will buy them. So yeah. they made me a brand ambassador, which means that I got a lot of stuff for free. Amen. You know, because that stuff is not cheap. Right. Dis discount? Did you get a discount? Code? I did. Also did. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have uh, moved on. Uh, you know, okay. Yeah. Oh, I say, I was like, sign me up. <laughs> I'm gonna get my pants today. <laughs> okay, you also talked about the Bible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, where does that come from? Where does your direction in God, your love and affirmation in His faith? <clears throat> it comes from my parents. My my dad, like when I was born, I was born in D.C., but I grew up here in Charlotte, mm -hmm. and he was the deacon of the church back home. It was a family okay. church, um, and it was just it's just how we grew up. Faith was an important part. We were one of like the drug ba drug baby era where you guys mm -hmm. drug the church all the time. And uh, 
you know, when you're younger, it's just like what you kind of have to do because your parents tell you. But yeah. now that I'm older, I, I see, the, see the value in it is not the right word, but it's a real thing. It's for me. It's not because somebody's making me do it. I mm, feel like yeah. connecting to something higher is super important. It is really important. I'm glad you can have that faith. It, it drives what you do and really yep. fuels, you know, yep. when it's not going well, where you can find direction. <sighs> Because I know you said that. I mean, you talked about the struggle. You talked about, you know, getting there. Right, right. Somebody believing in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. I mean, I don't know, with everything going on racially, politically, socially, yeah. if you don't have something that you can cling to for yeah. hope, I mean, yeah. how are you doing it? Because right. it's hard. I don't care what side you're on, you know. Like, it's hard. There's just, so, yeah, so for me, my faith is what carries me through. That is amazing. Yeah. I'm, that's a true testament. And so before we get out of here, I want to ask a couple, where can we find the book? It is at uh, 12secondculturebook.com. Okay. And uh, our 12 secondculturebook.com. Dot com. And then deckleadership.com is our website. So. And deckleadership.com. Okay, yep. you guys, Instagram, Facebook, where else can we find you? There's Deck Leadership was on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, LinkedIn. And then I'm Mr. Metcalf Jr. On, All right, so on say your socials. whole name. So yeah. what's your 10 second? Tell you, I am Mike Me Like I am Titan Carolina. I do this. What's yours? What's your 10 second claim to fame? Who are you? I'm Mike Metcalf, and I'm a force of diversity, efficiency, culture, and kindness. Hey. All right, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. Chef J. Mill definitely threw down in the kitchen, and I'm hoping that you love my desserts. And definitely hold on, because we have a drink special uh -oh. coming up right after this. Okay. See y'all. And of course, we wouldn't be Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business without having a drink portion, because our mixologist is here. Come and bring the drink, y'all. Come on. Yes. That is like. Ooh. I really. Do I, you mind me? Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. We can we can talk about that later. Okay. So what do we have today? So today we have the grapefruit sour. Okay. So we have a little bit of bourbon, some mint leaves, some grapefruit juice, some lemon juice, and a little bit of lime in there. Lime as a garnish. So. Ooh. Okay. So I'm Try so it out. excited. Okay. You ready? I, so I just want to look at it. Like it's, so, right. it's such a pretty drink. Like, yeah, thank you. Cheers to 12 seconds in. Culture. Hey. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That's dangerous. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you for more. That will be the first Stay tuned to more Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. <laughs>where now we have about 25 family owned stores wow. and another 50 or so stores that are licensed out that are able to use the name. Oh, wow. So here in Charlotte, we have seven locations. What, seven? We have seven stores. Okay, now I know two because I actually live next to like both of them, like um, <laughs> W.T. Harris yep, and yep. one towards Sharon Amity. Right. I'm right there, yes. which is why I frequent the store often. Okay, so you said your uncle started it. Yes. And so did you naturally fall in love with it or was it like a continuation of legacy? Um, it, it, it was a little complicated. Um, <laughs> complicated, my, my family started in the grocery industry in the 1970s. Okay. So I was basically born into this industry. My mom <laughs> was the first cashier. She was the first bookkeeper. Mm. And uh, the story is that, you know, three days before she went into labor with me, she was still working. And like three days after, she was back at work with me in a little carriage, right? <laughs> so, so I was basically born in the grocery industry. I've been in it my entire life. And uh, fortunately, it's worked out well. That is a, such a cool story. Like starting from the very beginning. Yeah. Like, 
literally in the womb. <laughs> He's a businessman. He was like, I got this plan, mom. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm out. Let me out. That is so awesome. Okay. So the seven locations here in Charlotte, how did you start to come here? You know, you have it all the way from New York down. So yeah. why Charlotte? So Charlotte was one of the fastest growing cities and it had one of the fastest growing Latino populations. Okay. So all of this amazing construction throughout the city, our people built this, yes, right? Yeah. So uh, we, we know that they needed a supermarket. So in 2005, we opened up the store in North Tryon and Sugar Creek. Okay. So that was our first supermarket. Ah, yeah. So that's three now, uh -huh. right? Um, and then we had some other operators that decided to leave the market, specifically Win Dixie. And yeah, that's where we opened yeah. up the Milton store, which is right next to where you live. Okay, and yeah. And also the one on Arrowwood Road, okay. on Arrowwood and South Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've just grown. As we find opportunities, we open up new stores. And fortunately, they've all been very successful. And our latest one is on Sunset Drive which is a former Just Save that we took over at the beginning of this year and we're looking to make it into another successful Compare Foods. That is so exciting. And you guys, to hear this, La Historia de Esa, is because I grew up here in Charlotte, North Carolina, when that place, Win dixie you know, growing in to see that. And of course, you know, soy un natural hispanohablante, you know, I learned in school, but the You're reason- You're doing very well. Gracias. And the reason this uh, it is because of the large population that moved in 2000s. That's how I fell in love with la cultura, la música y la gente. And I got my degree in Spanish and went to la República Dominicana. Wow, that's where my family is from. Really? Yeah. La verdad? Yeah, we're all we're from the Dominican Republic. What what city? Santiago. Santiago. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was about an hour and a half from there. Where were you? In Sasua. Okay, yeah, by Puerto Plata in the North Coast. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Wow, that's and so this is where my love for that came from. And you cannot find the foods that they have in this store everywhere. So I wanted to ask, what are some of the foods in Compare food that you can't find anywhere else? Oh, there's too many to list. Give me like the, like, like not like a star fruit or something, but like something crazy. Um, I'll tell you a couple of years ago, we were the first store to bring jackfruit yes. to North Carolina. Uh -huh. So now you see jackfruit everywhere. Yeah. You make jackfruit tacos and you buy, you know, jackfruit it's martinis. <laughs> right, it's, I mean, everybody's serving jackfruit now. We were the first supermarket to bring jackfruit, the actual fruit to oh Charlotte. God. And uh, it's very big in the Southeast Asian community. So people from Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, as soon as they found out that we had it, they started talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And we sold out an entire shipment in like three days. Oh, wow. Because we were the only ones that had it. Wow. So in our produce department, you will find yucca, you will find plantains, you will find malanga, you will find a variety of different products that you're not gonna get at Harris Teeter or Food Lion or Walmart or anywhere else. We're the only ones that are gonna have it. So the produce department is the big one with the fruits and vegetables. Our meat department, we also sell a lot of things that people look at, yeah. like do people actually eat that? Right. If you have it prepared the right way, it's delicious. It is, it right? is. So we do have a lot of different uh, varieties of meats that other stores don't carry as well. And that's kind of the key to our success. And that's the key to being a good chef. And because this is eat, drink, and handle your business, we're gonna taste some pretty good drinks here. So let's go ahead and bring that on set. That sounds good, that's great. All right, let's definitely bring that drink in. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we have our mixologist who makes amazing drinks. So what is in this? So in this you have some bourbon, some grapefruit juice, some lime juice, a little bit of mint, and of course, a. Uh, Language. Looks amazing. Thank yep, you. Yep. Cheers. You're welcome. So Thank cheers. You. <laughs> this may or may not have been my set today, but I'll try every single sample. It was wonderful. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, cheers to that. And before we do eat, you know, when we talked about something being interesting, that's what sets your business apart. It has, you know, foods that you can't find anywhere else. And even myself, I shop there regularly because there's just things I can't find. Fresh mangoes and things that are actually organic. The fruits and vegetables there, you don't have to worry about cleaning and all of this wax coming off of it. Right. You have to eat it immediately too, so that's how you know that it's a good product. Right, well, thank you. We work very hard to source it from all different parts of the country to make sure that even if it's not in season, we can still have it mm -hmm. in the stores. And sometimes that's not easy, especially with the pandemic that we had last year, yeah. sourcing became the supply chain became very difficult. Uh, we adapted well because we have such great relationships in Latin America that we're still able to get a lot of product when other stores weren't able to. So that worked out really uh, favorably for us, having that international presence. Wow, that I'm telling you, uh, this is like music to my ears, hearing about the experiences, the, you know, the culture, the food. So next, we're gonna feed into our food. So hang tight for this episode of Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business.
And you know it's my favorite time, you guys. Para la comida. Ooh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, my oh, my <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys cannot miss Chef j -Mail. And of course, our beautiful model, Janae. All right, so I make the desserts on the show. So this is actually made out of croissant dough and the apple filling in the middle. I cross braided it, it's baked, and of course it has total with that little sugar on top of it. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And then we also have a pound cake here, and we have these nuts. <laughs> no, no, we're not kidding. We're not kidding. <laughs> Mr. George, we're, we're, we're telling it's the truth now. I believe you. peanut butter called it's these nuts. It's really? It's that. cookies and cream. So. No, he's nice. like, it was, it, yeah. no, so don't roll on. It was like real. That's I got really it. What <laughs> D E E Z? No, no, D E E S E. Ah, it's the, these. It's her last name. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So go ahead and try your food, get your best reaction, you guys. It's called Taste on TV. It's called Food and Tea for a reason. I All right, let's it. go. Yes. You know, I'm Dominican, so we always start with the rice. Oh, okay. La, right? la okay, so uh, he'll say something and tell us what it is in Spanish. What's the word? Esto es un moro de guandules. Moro de guandules. Moro, M-O-R-O. -O. Okay, moro. Moro, which is basically a, a rice mix with pigeon peas. That's okay. what we call it in the Dominican Republic. So it's a very popular dish all over the Caribbean. Every country in the Caribbean makes pigeon pea rice. Uh, but that's what we call it. Guandules is pigeon peas, or gandules if you're Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. is pigeon peas. And I actually had this like three times this week already. <laughs> so this is a staple of our diet. <laughs> Breakfast. So let's go, let's go into... Yeah. Mm, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. I can't, I can't take credit, but I will. Thank you, you guys, for that's, that. It, it's got a little extra kick. Oh, yes. Which is very good. Oh, yeah. So it's seasoned with a little bit of chicken earlier. We put some of that over there. Oh, I'm mm. loving it. Okay. Excellent. Y la próxima. ¿Cómo se dice grits? I know I like it's made of corn. Porque no hay palabra para grits. I don't think there's a Spanish word no for grits. No hay palabra. No hay. No. Uh, it's like ground, ground corn. Well, I try that, to say it. That, that, that would be hominy, like hominy, right? Yeah. Entonces es eh, como eh, harina de maíz. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it's okay, like a so ground, ground, ground corn, corn. Mm -hmm. right? Harina de maíz. Mm -hmm. And we don't serve it this way. Right. What we usually do with uh, with grits, with, with basically is grits, is turn it into a dessert oh, called okay. majarete. Majarete. And you just pour a bunch of sugar in there, and it's it's absolutely incredible. Oh. But I love southern grits because I'm basically I'm southern. I've been in Charlotte <laughs> yeah. since 2009. Yeah, so, you're one of us. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> no, I, I eat that. grits all the time. Nureza familia, and it's so funny because you know in our in the, the black community wow. we say, do you put sugar or salt in your grits? So he just said, sugar, we are going to cause a debate, ask that question, <laughs> do you put sugar or salt in your grits? <laughs> these grits are amazing. You know, he puts like sweet cream in yeah, it. Yeah, these, these creams, these creams are, this, these grits yeah. are incredible. Thank you. It's yeah. put sweet cream. Like literally, I said, mm. did you put milk in this? Because I don't want to, you know, be sick during this part. And next we're going to go to this uh, rotisserie chicken, which is the jerk chicken, I'm guessing. Yes. Let's tear up this chicken it's leg. So good. Oh my gosh. And you guys, I don't eat meat. Okay. I know there was a small you know, pause for my that. Doctor, <laughs> my doctor's telling me to stop eating meat. It's so funny because there was like a he pause. He keeps telling me I need to go to, I, go, I need to become plant-based. Plant, oh, it's yeah. on every package now. Plant yes, based. yes. <laughs> so let's go into this chicken. Okay. Mm. <laughs> oh man. He does a good job. I did have a piece of chicken Delicious. Though. I don't know how it's going to fare well for me lately, <laughs> but I, I was not going to give that up. This is amazing chicken. He does a really good job. And you're definitely gonna have to try the other ones too. The other Caribbean jerk ones, there was another type. There's like, he makes like eight different types of chicken, you guys. And none of them look the same. I swear he puts like 10 billion ingredients on them, all from Compare Foods, of course. When we actually set up, he has like 10 seasoning cans up there. Nice. Like 10, he's like, I need all of them. I have no space for my cooking. And that's another thing that I think that differentiates us from everybody else is the variety of spices. Oh, that yes. we have in the store. Yes. So we'll, we'll, we will have so many different spices that you just can't find mm -hmm. in other places. And we have a lot of chefs that come in just for the spices, the produce, and the meat department. Mm -hmm. And when the professionals like to shop with us, that makes me feel good. That's when you know you're doing it, yeah, right? Yeah, that, that makes me feel good. When I see them come in with their chef's aprons, yeah. right? And they're walking around, that makes me, you know, I want to take a picture with them and <laughs> make sure that, uh, you know. You know it's real. Yeah, get, get some feedback from them. Yes. So I don't know how to eat a chicken wing with a fork. Because you so don't. So I got I to dig into it with He's right, because you don't. 
knows how to eat chicken, you guys. Okay, if you haven't <laughs> eaten on this show, you guys, when you're at home, you're supposed to tear it off the bone. Yeah. Okay, nothing left. No chicken left behind. But the staple nuts, you know, across the states, no child left behind. No chicken, no skin. I don't eat chicken skin, you guys, so don't judge me. This one's got a tip. Oh, it's spicy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you can feel it from your inside out. Yeah. <laughs> I think he ate all his, his wings. <laughs> you know, Good. Okay. Now I, need, now I need to clean my hands. All right, we're definitely gonna bring in. Can we have a napkin? <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, welcome back to Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. If you guys weren't just tuning in, tune in now. We have the CEO of Compare Foods. Say your name again. Omar George. Omar George. Okay, so you've almost. Look, you guys, he's gonna wipe all of this out. And I am so excited because I'm gonna try this dessert. And it's called a D's Nuts, but not to be confused. It is D-E-E-S-E. -E -E. So I'm gonna put that in. Welcome to D's Nuts. It's a product with peanut butter and cookies and cream right over top of our dessert. And so I'm about to try that right now. Oh, it's actually legit. It tastes like natural peanut butter. Not, not like it doesn't have too much oil in it. Oh yeah, okay, you got me. This is really good. This is really, really good. I took a little bit of that chicken sauce and put it on the, on the salmon. Mm -hmm. um, unbelievable. Ooh. Unbelievable, it's so good. You can take that, that sauce that's on that chicken, put it on anything. Oh my god. It's gosh. gonna make it incredible. Oh, I'm so excited. And of course, if you're not checking everything out, you should know that our chef, Chef J. Mill, has his own sauce. It's at a, a lot of stores, come on to Charlotte, and it is amazing. So we're definitely gonna show you what that is later. So that's where that comes from. Delicious, amazing, uh, thank you. Thank you. All right, so to wrap it up, where can we find you? You know, if somebody was looking to get in this industry, what's a piece of advice they could give you? Or you could give them. <laughs> uh, a piece of advice that I can give anyone that wants to get into the supermarket industry is to be willing to start at the bottom and work your way up. It's not an easy industry to be in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, you're working weekends, you're working holidays, you're working nights. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's rewarding because food is the most important part of any culture. So when you see people from Ecuador, from Vietnam, from Thailand, from Russia, from Africa, that walk into the store and they're transported back to their home country just because of the foods that you sell, it's an incredibly rewarding career, and uh, I encourage everyone to come visit us at Compare Foods. Like I said, seven locations in Charlotte. Visit your nearest one, and you'll probably find me at one of them. I travel through all of them. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of it. This is like home for me, seeing culture from the very beginning. He said he started, he was inside of his mother's <laughs> womb when, they, when she was working at the grocery store, and yeah. now he's the CEO. Talking about from the bottom, literally, but from the bun, to literally the whole bread store. <laughs> so thank you. Stay tuned thank to Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. We have more coming up. Because I don't eat meat, I like to supplement a lot of my protein with my favorite thing, which is peanut butter. And I just found it and it's called these nuts. Not to be confused, it's D-E-E-S-E. -E -E. So how did you get started? <laughs> so my last name is Dees. Um, Back in high school, whenever I would tell people my last name, they would always go with the joke, these nuts. So me and my mom thought it would be fun to just start making peanut butter. So we got into it and, and here these we nuts are. Is, is here. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that you have a, a bunch of different flavors. We do. I had Oreo, you guys. Oreos with peanut butter, man, it's the best after the day snack. Okay, so. How did you just come up with peanut butter? Like, was it a love? Or? So yeah, I love peanut butter also, um, and it's very easy to make. Um, and we just kind of spice it up a little bit, make it fun, have extra flavors. So we have like 12 or 13 flavors on our website that you can go check out. Um, we have dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate, all the kinds of different things you can think of, so. Ooh, so definitely an ice cream party, oh, you throw a yeah. little bit of that peanut butter on top of yeah. it. Ooh, so for kids' parties, quick note, if you have to do something really fast for your kids, they're like, oh, Johnny, Timmy, everybody's coming over, mm -hmm. throw some ice cream and then put a little bit of what? These nuts. Exactly, right over top <laughs> of it. So make sure you tune it into all of the crazy things like eat, drink, and handle your business because you'll never get the plug on this type of peanut butter anywhere <laughs> else. Okay, so last question, where can we find you? So we have a website, thesenuts.com. That's www.d-e-e-s-e-n-u-t-z.com. And we also have a Facebook, Instagram, and a TikTok as well. Oh, that's so awesome. And of course, we gotta get the family to come in. So can they just run up here and Mom. show us what you look like? <laughs> just everybody just come in. Like we gotta have a family photo, you know? That was good. 
Yeah, it's whole family yes. look. Yes. All right. So this Come is my on. mom. She is my business partner. All right. So. All right, we got here. All right. We gotta slide all the way in. Yes, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> and we got who? So this is my mom, she's my business partner, my fiance, and then my social media manager, Lily Yin. I love it, <laughs> family affair, and it's all about these nuts. So check out all of these flavors and make sure you say, I heard it first on what? Eat, drink, and handle your business. Yeah, I was not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Welcome to Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business, Handle Your Business episode. Yeah, I said Handle Your Business, Handle Your Business <laughs> episode. And we're here with somebody who definitely handles their business. This is Mrs. Joan T. Randall. Yep. And the T is because she's about to spill all the tea <laughs> with me. <laughs> Talk to me, Miss Joan. What's yes, up? sir. I'm good. How's everything been going? I know it's a tumultuous time in our country right now. It's definitely, you know, it's different for business owners. Yeah. So how have you been managing? Fantastic, because I pivoted. What does that mean? It Just means, talk to the camera. It means that. That's a big. I made, I made Ms. the Joan, decision. Miss Joan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She pivoted. I pivoted. Talk to him. Tell him so what So I did. made the decision to make a switch in my business because of COVID and I'm limitless. So I don't put limits on myself. And as a result of that, I thought to myself, what can I do differently now that everyone is sitting at home? And so that's when I decided to create this academy called Book to Business and Beyond. And I know you're gonna ask me more about that. Yes, so I'm we'll definitely gonna ask that. you more about that. But let's just talk about what your business was before COVID mm -hmm. and then how you pivoted, okay? Right. So what was your business before COVID? So I was a personal development coach because I believe in a growth mindset. And so I always wanted to help people change their lives. And when you change your life, it really is changing how you think. And so I did that for years. And when COVID hit, I knew that people were at home. So I wanted to do something differently. People had time on their hands to write. And so when I pivoted, I decided to reach out and find people that were willing to share their story. Because you're sitting at home, you have nothing to do but you know, wonder, worry, fret, what's gonna happen? Because at that time, we had no clue, no idea truly what this pandemic was. And so there was a lot of fear and people were at home, they were able to write, they were able to think, they were able to process. And it was the perfect time for people to get their stories out. And so I pivoted, started the, um, the Books to Business Academy, did a summit online, and asked some women, are you ready to write your story? And they said yes. So give, and me, give me some background, Joan. Tell yes. me how you got into doing books and stories. Like, where did that come from? Because you know me, listen, Joan, I was very bad at, at, at English. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it is what it is. I was bad at English, you know, like, I, I, I mean, but I, I like to tell my story, you know, so I tell a lie every now <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, like, I, I understand, you know, how important it is to tell stories and how mm -hmm. important it is to let people know what it is that is going on out here in the world. We have right. nonfiction, we have fiction, we have all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into this space? So in 2016, I wrote my first book. And 16? So five 2016, years ago. 2016, five okay. years ago. I wrote my first book and the book was a precursor to what I really wanted to write. I had a very painful story that I wanted to tell the world because I was able to go from broken to brave, victim to victor, survivor to thriver. And so I knew I had a story that could impact the lives of others, but I was hesitant to write the story because I wasn't sure if I would be judged. And so I decided that before I wrote the story, let me get myself known, let me put myself out there so that by the time the story come, people would really truly want to hear what I had to say. So I wrote a devotional called 90 Days to a Victorious You. Okay. And it was 90 scriptures that dealt with faith, hope, healing, and victory. And that was how I got into writing. That's dope. Yeah. Okay. So now that so you've been in the writing, mm -hmm. what successes have you had? What challenges have you had? What, what, what advice could you give to young writers, people who are looking to get into this industry? 
So, tons of successes. I've written 11 books in five years. I am an award-winning, 10 times best-selling author. I have helped over 300 people become best-sellers. Wow. See, that's what I do best. That's my secret sauce. I am called the author's midwife. And so I have a way of getting people to Hold tell on, their what's story. what's a midwife? Because everybody ain't, everybody ain't that fancy. <laughs> what's a midwife, Joan? A person that helps you to deliver and give birth oh, okay. to something. So you giving birth to dreams out here. Okay, Absolutely. talk to me, talk to me. Absolutely. Okay, all right, come on, let's go. I'm the dream birther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so okay. I believe that everyone has a story, right? Your story can be an expertise. Your story can be a gift. Your story can be a message. Your story can be an experience and we all deserve to tell our stories. Why? Because in your story is your power. You own your power when you tell your story. And although the Bible said, write the vision and make it plain, it doesn't necessarily mean a vision that you're dreaming about. It means the vision of your life, what God brought you through. That deserves to be told so that you can be a vitamin or a painkiller for someone else. And what do I mean by that? A vitamin is that your story can enhance someone's life. A painkiller is that you have the solution to someone's problem. That's dope, Joan, because I'm going to tell you right now, some <laughs> stories I don't want to tell. Because <laughs> it might be too much a painkiller for me. But... I'm so glad we have you on the show because Thank a lot of you. times people do not understand mm -hmm. how they get from A to B. Mm -hmm. So before you was in this industry, what were you doing and what led you to get into this industry and how easy was it for you to transition from what you were doing to this mm -hmm. particular industry? So I spent 25 years in corporate America and before I left corporate America, I was a regional vice president. So I did that for 25 years, but there was something that was unfulfilling. I never felt as if the story that I had, my impact, my purpose, my power was being used in corporate America. And so I wanted to make a difference in others' lives because I believe that I was purpose to impact lives, to change the outcomes. So because I knew I had a story hiding for so many years, I wanted that story to be able to impact the lives of women that may be going through what I experienced. And so I decided to, after 25 years, I got a nice package. I retired and decided to start my business at the age of 52. And the reason why I'm telling you my age is because age is just a number you can Hold accomplish. On. Age ain't nothing but a number. <laughs> Bringing out ain't nothing but a thing. Uh, what uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Joan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just had, you know, <laughs> hey. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I truly believe that age is just a number. And I will tell you this, the older you are is the more mature you are. And so maturity brings a level of expertise that you don't have when you are younger. So there's nothing wrong with you starting a business or going back to school or doing what you want to do at 50, at 60, at 70, right? It's just a number. And as long as the mindset is there for you to accomplish those things, things that you may have put on the back burner for years prior, it's time to get in the game and do it now. You can do it because you are limitless. And you're limitless because you serve a God that has no limit. You are the DNA of God. What does that mean? It means that you have dominion, you have his name, and you have authority. And if you have dominion, his name, and his authority, it means that you are created in his image. And if he, if you're created in his image, it means that you're limitless. There's no limit on, on anything unless you put the limits on yourself based on what you think. That's exactly right. Joan is preaching to you guys. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. My pastor would tell it to you like this. You ought not have a limit on your life. You ought to stand up be a man and step out there and chase your dreams. Praise God. <laughs> and but, the people say amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen and amen. But Joan, listen, we're going to try yeah. some food. Okay. Because yeah. we brought you here to talk about all the things you're talking about. Yeah. But see, Joan... She is, she's stepping up. She has limits with her food. She's limitless with her business, but she has limits with her food. So she doesn't eat meat except for salmon and red snapper. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna bring out some salmon and red snapper Ooh. along with some cheese grits. 
Ooh, can okay. you eat cheese grits? I can eat okay, cheese Okay, and we're gonna have some roasted broccoli as well as some cabbage. All right. So stay tuned to Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. We'll be right back with Miss Joan, who is inspiring you to live your best life. Amen. Living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you. We'll be right back. <laughs> And hey, we about to eat like in 1999, John. I don't know now. <laughs> Here you go, John. Talk to me. All you right know what you now. cook. Look. Yeah, I know what I cook. Look, hey, yep. talk to me. Look, but I want to talk about this drink, Jasmine. What yep. the heck is this? Because I know John don't drink. She, right. she, she too Here's Christian a for me. No Meat alcohol. Meat is an elder. <laughs> Meat is an elder. But what is this, Jasmine? I'm a because she alcohol. don't drink. So yep. right. right. I call this the Caribbean kiwi. So Caribbean. We have okay. Some Jasmine, hold on. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm gonna slow down. Yeah, slow down because <laughs> I feel like I'm in the Caribbean. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm in Hawaii or something. Mm -hmm. You got kiwi, lime, lemonade, and I actually muddled the kiwi in the glass mm -hmm. and muddled. added a little mint leaf to give it some color. That word, muddled. Mm -hmm. Yep, muddled. muddled. The mint is for Joan and the church people. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. It's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Look like we're drinking too. We look like we're drinking, but we ain't. There you go. Look like we in Jamaica. They do, don't it? We have some salmon, some cheddar grits, uh, some red snapper, some cabbage, and some, some roasted broccoli. So if you can try whatever you think you like and yes. let me know what you think about it. I'm going to eat a little bit too because I'm hungry. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What is this? That's the, That's red, the snapper. red snapper, yeah. Yeah. And it has a little like a lemon cream vinegar right on top. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's my kind of food right there. Mm, mm, mm. Did you cook this because you know I'm coming? Yeah. You always <laughs> look out for my people. I'm trying to give you the experience. Mmm, mm. <laughs> mm, good. Thank you. So, Joan, how can people get involved with what you have going on? Well, they can just connect with me via social media. Joan T. Randall everywhere. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, <laughs> Twitter, uh, Pinterest. And that's R-A-N-D-A-L-L. -L. And I am Googleable, so just Google my name. Oh, you big time, John. We'll give you everything. Okay. Amen. And my website is, you can get to my website two ways, joantrandall.com, or you can go to victoriousupress.com, which is my publishing company. So, Joan, what is the last thing you want to say to the people? Mm-hmm. What is it that you will leave them with to encourage them to get out there, to live their dreams, and to also connect with you in order to put their dreams, their visions, their 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 instructional um, their instructions yeah. into a book or a manual format. Do you do video format as well or just 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 books? Well, um, I do mostly books. Okay. It's all it's mostly nonfiction. So it's uh, your true story, right? Okay. Um, devotionals, poetry, all of those things uh, that we do. Um, and we do the Kindle version or we do the paperback version and we just added to our company the audio version so now if you want to publish a book you can actually do the audio version um, as well the thing about what i want to leave you with is that no matter what you have experienced in life right it is always leading to a purpose pain can sometimes turn into your purpose so no matter how painful your story may be there comes a point in time when you should no longer hide that pain or hide that story because the minute you write that story the minute you take power over that story you no longer stand in the story but you're standing on the story and I can tell you this, that no matter what your story is or how bad your story is or, or how great your story is, someone is out there waiting on your specific story to impact their lives. So what are you waiting for? Make it happen. Connect with me and get your story written. Well, we're going to finish drinking this mocktail. We're going to finish eating this food. Yep. Thank you for tuning in to Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. We are so happy to have you guys on board. And 
make sure you connect with Joan because listen, I know everybody has a story. Everybody has something they wanna get out there. So you make sure you go to JoanTRandall.com, follow Joan T. Randall at IG, Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And we Clubhouse too. Clubhouse, hey, I ain't even on that. Clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll look out for you and you look out for us at Eat and Drink TV on Instagram and Facebook. And we look forward to seeing you again on Eat, Drink, and Handle Your Business. Thank you for joining us. Peace. <laughs>